<sighs> now I was driving around with the car and I had to stop because the whole day I'm flooded with this this excitement with this overbearing feeling of of love really expansive energy of of just having come to an end and then i found out today jupiter is at the 29th degree so basically at a 360 degree of a circle 12 years it takes for jupiter to go around um and that's huge have a look where you have been 12 years ago and see what correlation you can do you can come up with become aware of what happened 12 years ago and maybe in a similar way happens just right now i know 12 years ago i was just running away from bankruptcy uh, heading off to australia or being in that year um and it's amazing because exactly at that moment jupiter must have been exactly at that same time and something came that said i am not how much money i have in my pocket how successful i am in business now it is i'm not the partner of the relationship so it doesn't matter who i have as a partner um of famous or rich or beautiful or good looking or spiritual or whatever that i'm not that but much much more and that i'm all that that i'm trying to see on the outside and i'm just am that and much much more feel into what the feminine tells you what's happening now where you want to go from here remember it's coming full cycle so something new starts where do you want to start this and what is your absolute radical truth and now there's one advice don't listen to the mind the mind the mind only has reference points from the past trying to survive in the present but it is your feminine aspect and I thank, I feel so grateful and thankful for all these trailblazers, uh, the hippies, um, the spiritual people who have created this new world, have created a world of uncertainty by trailblazing and doing it their own way, what felt right to them, that didn't make sense at the time and now even generations later it starts to make sense people are adapting to a new way of living with nature of getting out of the city centers of not wanting being perched together like cattle but living as an individual and having the heart's compassion to allow oneself and therefore the projection is that i allow the others to be individual too and i have compassion for them and whatever they're battling with so I'm here and seeing the greater context of, of the whole pain and suffering and joy and pleasure um, of how it all plays part. If I follow my heart and I hurt someone, then that is exactly what I'm here to do in this moment. I I'm, I'm, have signed up for playing a role um, for someone to realize the big illusion that they can't be rejected, they can't be abandoned. And that whatever has happened is, is a truthful moment of bliss, of, of joyful, heartfelt experiencing of the divine feminine. She's the life. She's the experience. We're just the presence. Uh, imagine like the sign for God is, is the sun with a little dot in it. So the whole circle is life's experience. That's the femininity. That's why she's so suppressed, because she's it all. Everything, the feminine, is an experience. And that little tiny dot is just our mind who comes into presence and says, I want to focus on that. 
that's all. So it's the servant of, of bringing that down. It's that to anchor of whatever infinite reference point we're choosing to bring home, to bring down on earth. And therefore, create heaven on earth. Yesterday I spoke about like, we can choose. We can choose, follow our bliss and our joy and our love and doing no matter what. It doesn't matter what other people think, it's none of your business. You have to do what you have to do and you realize when you really, really, I always wake up every morning and I say, please let me walk in your shoes. Let me be the Christ consciousness. Let me be the true light, the true um, clean and, and truth that is there in each moment. Let me see it. Um, and let me live by it. Let me have the courage. And, and for me as a sexologist, let me have the balls to do something with my erection, with my pleasure, with my joy, that I follow that path, that I go in that direction. And therefore you need to have balls. And if you truly want to walk it, you need to be in any moment present because in any moment you will experience truth and that truth maybe is not the way how it is yesterday or has been just a moment ago you learn that so much when you do these um games of of consent and you touch someone and in one moment you don't want to be touched in a certain way in an intimate way maybe but five minutes later, it's maybe a complete different story. And he's like, yeah, please, but hold on, five minutes ago, you didn't. So there is a communication part. Um, and it constantly changes and it constantly unravels. And we just have to hold present. Hold presence of what's right now. There, the, one thing came is like someone said, Oh, but uh, you said this and this, and it wasn't, uh, and what is it now? How do you feel about now? Was it truthful that you said it? I said, of course it was truthful. I just lived by my heart. And with that heart, I brought the present moment of paradise. In this moment, I experienced that. And yeah, it wasn't powerful enough to maintain it and keep it there for all time or manifest it in real materiality. But at least I've experienced it. Right? And there is, um, in the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was God. So it's, it's this process from you manifesting from the spiritual into the material. And in that moment when you dare to speak out, even though maybe it has nothing to do, it's not the right timing, just do it because of your heart. If your heart tells you, just be that. Because that's the way how we manifest. Ah, but we don't want to be ridiculous. You wouldn't say that on the first date like tell her tell him whatever it is and experience the moment of bliss that it would be perfect that it would be paradise in this moment of time and so because it is at this moment of time it has to be and this is what goes wrong our mind comes in and, and tells us what we should do and what we shouldn't What is right and what isn't right, we hold back, we limit ourselves. And then, of course, afterwards, when it hasn't worked out, we go with our mind over it again and, and trying to put it apart and take it apart and say, I wasn't right and that wasn't that. It's like, that, no, we're manifesting in that moment where we choose limitless, infinite possibility. Can we just pour out our heart into the world and don't worry too much what other people think of was it right or was it wrong? Just be in the moment. This is to be the child. The children shall belong to the heaven or to the paradise. Be child, live in the moment. And as you live in the moment, you create more and more reference points of true paradise. And the more you add up, the more the manifestation process sets in and it manifests quicker and quicker. But if we hold back and if we don't live but wish that a certain moment would be coming down the line in the future, you see, it's like it goes nuts. No, be now. 
be now and express your heart fully and open and and rip your clothes off and be naked and be vulnerable and be raw and be love. And if it hurts other people, no, no, it's none of your business. Your business is to be love. The highest form that you can be, whatever that is. I mean, I become a, a sacred, sacred sexual healer. It's like, I get intimate with people because my heart is telling me to. Because I don't want to work with the clinical aspect and I want to allow my intuition to be the guiding force in my life, not willpower or not science. And yeah, I have to stalk myself and I have to see, hey, what am I doing? Where's my ego? What am I doing here? But ultimately, there's only one question. Is it a yes or is it a no? Why it would be a yes or why it would be a no? That's the mind already. If your gut feeling tells you yes or no, then this is what you have to do. And then you play along with it in your childlike, in your childlike innocence and playfulness and curiosity. And allow the experiences to come through that want to be coming through. And then stay in contact. As you went in, come out of it. Don't make it abrupt, but allow it to unravel. Allow it to be seen. Allow it to have stages of unpacking. As much as you pack, you unpack the experiences that you have created. So I'm in absolute bliss in the nature. You see behind me this, this field of pure yellow. It's just sensational. When your heart goes open, everything becomes so much more vibrant. Yes, you become vulnerable. Yes, you can get hurt easier. But hey, so what? It isn't exactly that scaling, right? Those people who live in the mind, they live in a controlled comfort zone. It's, it's, a, it's a movie of black and white. There's no emotional variation to it. But if you choose vulnerability, if you choose love, then your emotional bandwidth that becomes unpersonal. This is the, this is the importance. With, this is only half the story. It's like, oh, you should control your emotions. You should detach from the emotions that are there, but you still should live the emotions. It is exactly your point to, to figure out all the emotions that are there of grief, of joy, of pleasure, of sadness, of whatever it is. Yes, but detach from it. It's not you personally. It's just experience of it. And the better you get in detaching from the emotion that is there while it's fully feeling it, the more you can embody it all and it becomes a tool to you. So then it doesn't belong to the, the, the side of limitations anymore, but it becomes a tool and you can choose in a way because if you go into grief and into sadness, you know that this is just the, 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 the diving platform to dive into joy and pleasure. Because stay too long in one particular modality and you numb. So therefore you need to have that weaving in and out, that ambivalence of going in and out and allowing yourself to flow with it. And you can only enjoy so much the weather and the sunshine and the glorious colors. But if you have every day just the sun and just the yellow color and just the green, the lush green, you just numb on it because you start longing for the rain. And this is really what it is all about, what I experience on a daily basis with my non-monogamous styling of living in love. Is, <sighs> there's so many experiences out there and every person triggers a different kind of scenario. This is alchemy. You mix A with Z, uh, something else comes out and you mix A with, with E or with Z. But are you able to say, it's like, okay, I go with the flow and I experience life with infinite possibilities and learn from all of that? Or do I go back into the comfort zone and settle with that? Yeah, and I know our life is very much this that locks us, wants to lock us. But most of the time is 
that locking in to play part for someone else's vision, for a nation, for a business, for a partner, for the parents because they're close by and are maybe in the process of getting older or dying even. So we have to stay there. Really, is that what it is all about? Or is your unconditional truth actually something else? So, slow down. Breathe, in particular, breathe out from your belly. <sighs> and feel what's going on. And when you feel, then you'll find sooner or later your intuition. And don't, don't question it. Just do it and see how it goes. And sometimes you're being called to, to hurt someone. Sometimes you're being called to bring pleasure. But you know for the person, if they have learned whatever hurtful thing, hurtful illusion there was for them, for them they step right into pleasure again. If not, they have to do another turn to experience this because that's why they are here. So don't take it personal. Just be that. And feel the glory of being that. And after all, that brings you into compassion for everybody. For the fathers that have been incarnated in the post-war culture of being emotionally detached or unavailable to their daughters, to their sons. But you have to give them credit that they play that role so that we can learn our lesson on a collective state. And you just over and over open up what amazing job they play of how they hold up the role. And even if it breaks other people, they still keep up that role because they have signed up for it. So you sign up for it too. This is your heart's choice. This is why we have come here and we say we play this role. So play it. And don't get distracted about, oh, I maybe hurt that person or that. Be selfish. Nobody is serving anybody by serving them. You only serve the world by becoming yourself in each moment. And tell, I tell you, you can't be put into boxes that you're this or that. There's birth and there's death and there's everything in between. And if you think you can put yourself in a box, then that's fair enough. You have to experience that. And maybe find freedom within the confinement of identifying yourself of who you are. I just know I've died too many deaths. And I love the new. I love the new experience. I love the femininity. I love the, the experience of life and that's uncertainty. Therefore, it's for me relatively easy to get rid of this what I know because my love is greater for the uncertainty, for the feminine, to experience, to anchor the experience of the femininity in this life than to, than to hold tight on security and safety. Which is the masculinity. It's a focal point. How can I aware, how can I assure survival? How can I live? That's what love is all about. Have I lived today? Hmm. And I know I have a job to do tonight. And if I have done that job, I now have lived today because I went through thousands of emotions and I dealt with thousands of things and I got to know myself better and therefore I can make clearer decisions each moment. And I look forward for the experience, what it will feel if I dare to do that, to have the balls to follow my erection, that, that I'm aroused for that's why i'm have this erection for life like directs me it builds me up it points me into a certain direction 
if I follow my balls, if I have the balls to do something with it. I say it's never about the cock, it's about having the balls to follow the direction that your cock is pointing you to. And of course, if that is connected to your heart and into your intuition, then magic is going to happen. So don't make war, make love. It's easy as that. I hope that inspired you a little bit and um, brings you into your heart. Choose the feminine. Choose the experience of life, the uncertainty. Choose your masculinity to no matter what. Anchor it and bring that experience down and work with it. Because as they said, people who die they don't regret what they have done, but they regret what they haven't done. So if you have the vision, then do it. Because that means to be who you are. In every being, real, authentic being, there's doing. But you need to be who you are and then you know what you need to do. Not trying to do something so that therefore you would be good enough to be. Make the feminine principle the leading force, the receiving force, where you get the intuition, the Holy Spirit, God's helper that's been sent to you to guide you. Let her be the principle that rules your life and let the masculine within you see it through. Birth it, anchor it, get sure that it's safe for her to come down and then see what happens. I guess it's close to paradise, heaven on earth. But you can choose also the mind and go for the other thing that's called hell. Just to be questioned and finding plenty of opportunities to get out of it, to realign yourself, to repent and go back to who you are. Easy as that. Anyway, I'm sabling again. Speak soon.